Have you ever had to do some unstitching at your long arm? It's a thing that happens to all of us, no matter how carefully we stitch. There are various reasons for it, but there are also ways to make it easier and less painful. Let's look at some of those. I'm Susan Smith. Welcome into my studio, Stitched by Susan. I love to pull back the curtain on the things that I'm working on, the things that I'm learning, and the tips and tricks that I think might be helpful to you as a quilter as well. And one of them, which is not very glamorous, but is really, really useful, is learning how to unstitch or undo or unpick your stitching, whatever you want to call it, at your long arm machine. If you've got poor tension going on or you've just made a mistake or decided you don't like a design, there are various reasons why you need to take out some stitching and it can be much less painful with a few shortcuts that I'm going to show you. Every long armor at some point has to deal with unstitching. It's very unglamorous, but just know that it's going to happen. So I'm going to bring for you some of my long experience at unstitching to show you some of the tips that I've learned. One of my favorite ways to do it is from the top side of the quilt, right, pulling on the top thread also. And so far, because I'm just starting, I just have a little tail, but this is going to get longer and longer as I work, and that's going to help me. So I'm going to give a nice good tug to that, and that's going to pull up my bobbin thread. And I'm just catching that bobbin thread with my seam ripper. Now, here's another key that I have found. Number one, two keys. Number one is pull the thread quite snugly. As it gets longer, I'll be able to pull harder, like almost to breaking point. And number two, and this is really important, don't hold the thread straight up from the quilt or flat down on the quilt, but hold it at about a 45 degree angle out. What that does for you is pulls up that bobbin thread and exposes it for your seam ripper to catch. Each of those stitches is one coming out and I'm just able to brush my seam ripper across and it catches it. If I have my thread pulled too far toward me against the existing stitching, that stitch lays too flat and it's harder to catch. Likewise, if my thread is flat over here, it's harder to catch. And as my top thread gets longer, I kind of wrap it around my fingers. And as my bobbin thread gets longer, I break it off whenever I can. And that just releases a few more stitches. Do you see that? So it's super easy then to undo. And as I go around the corner of my stitching, I'll change the position of my hand that's holding the thread. Let's just do some undoing here. And you know, not every stitch comes smoothly as you can see, but this is by far the fastest way that I've found. So my long tail, I just keep winding up. I keep pulling at that 45 degree angle and pulling hard. And then my bobbin can just pull that bobbin thread up just like that. And I just keep working my way around the corners, turning it as I go. Now, let me show you another method of doing this, which has its pros and cons, which I'll tell you about as we go. So similarly, I've got my long top thread and I'm pulling on it hard, but instead of pulling each stitch with my ripper, this time I'm literally going to cut and allow it to pull from the tension of my top thread. And that will undo a half an inch or an inch of stitching each time. So the pro is it goes fast. As you can see, this is going very quickly. Well, when it works smoothly, there we go. And again, you can see I'm changing directions based on the direction of my stitching. So I'm always pulling straight out from that stitching and about a 45 degree angle. And as my stitching turns the corner, so does my arm that's hanging on that thread. Okay, I bet you're seeing the con already. The con is I've got all these bobbin thread bits now because I've cut them and they've all got to be picked off because you do not want to sew over them and stitch them into your quilting. So you be the judge of which one works better for you. This one undoes faster, but picking all those threads gets laborious. So I definitely prefer the kind where I've just am undoing the stitching with my seam ripper, but you try them out and see which one works for you. Okay. So that's the main thing. Now I have another one done with sharp corners and I've got a tip for you on the corners as well. So let's get this one started undoing. There we go. We're getting it going. Okay. So again, I'm pulling on this top thread tail as hard as I can, undoing the bobbin thread with my seam ripper. And as soon as I have a tail long enough, break it. That allows me to pull a bunch of stitches out all at once, but I still haven't cut my bobbin thread. It's still coming all the way to the surface. So I don't have to worry about there being loose bobbin threads that I'll stitch underneath. But here's my tip for you on corners. Time your breaking of thread to happen when you're at a corner. 
So in other words, I could already break this one now, but I only have about six stitches left here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those six out with my seam ripper. And the reason for this is when you turn a corner with your machine, whether it's your long arm or your sit down, almost always there's a few tighter stitches at that corner because you've slowed down and paused and the machine kept stitching. They can cause you trouble when you're just flip, 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 flipping one thread at a time with your seam ripper. But if you pull this break when you're right at that corner, it pulls out those fine little stitches for you. And then you can go on to the next corner and hopefully do the same thing. And if it's not long enough to pull and break, I sometimes just reach in there and cut it. And then again, I can just pull and those tight little corner stitches release. And that just speeds up the whole process so much. So there you go, my best tips for unstitching. Have fun with that. <laughs>